Cantos 88 to 90 of Book 2 of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om 123. Canto 88 The Inguri Tree. When Varat, with his friend and peer, had heard the tale so full and clear, they went together to the tree, the bed which Rama pressed to see. Then Varat to his mother said, Behold the household hero's bed, These tumbled heaps of grass betray, Where he that night with Sita lay. Unmeet, the heir of fortune high, Thus on the cold bare earth should lie. The monarch's son, in council sage, Of old imperial lineage, That lion lord, whose noble bed, With finest skins of deer was spread, How can he now endure to press, the bare earth, cold and comfortless. This sudden fall from bliss to grief, happiest untrue beyond belief. My senses are distraught, I seem, to view the fancies of a dream. There is no deity so great, no power in heaven can master fate. If Rama, the Sirotair, lay on the ground and slumbered there, and lovely Sita, she who springs from fair Budehas and saint kings, Rama's dear wife, by all adored, lay on the earth beside her lord. Here was his couch, upon this heap, he tossed and turned in restless sleep. On the hard soil each manly limb has stamped the grass with signs of him. That night, it seems, fair Sita spent, arrayed in every ornament, for here and dear my eyes behold small particles of glistering gold. She laid her outer garment here, for still some silken threads appear how dear in her devoted eyes must be the bed where rama lies where she so tender could repose and by his side forget her woes alas unhappy guilty me for whom the prince was forced to flee and chief of ragu's sons and best a bed like this with sita pressed son of a royal sire whose hand ruled paramount over every land could he, who every joy bestows, Whose body, like the lotus, shows? The friend of all, who charms the sight, Whose flashing eyes are darkly bright, Leave the dear kingdom, he is by right, And meet for war, the heir of bliss, And lie upon a bed like this. Great joy and happy fate are thine, O Lakshman, marked with each fair sign, Whose faithful footsteps follow still, Thy brother in his hour of ill. And blessed is Sita, nobly good, Who dwells with Rama in the wood. Ours is, alas, a doubtful fate, Of Rama reft and desolate. My royal sire has gained the skies, In wood the high-souled hero lies. This state is wrecked and tempest-tossed, A vessel with her rudder lost, Yet none in secret thought has planned, With hostile might to seize the land. Though forced in distant wilds to dwell, The hero's arm protects it well, Unguarded with deserted wall, No elephant or steed in stall. My father's royal city shows Her portals open to her foes, Of bold protectors reft and bare, Defenceless in her dark despair. But still her foes the wish restrain, As men from fortune cates refrain, I from this hour my nights will pass, Couched on the earth, or gathered grass, eat only fruit and roots, and wear a coat of bark and matted hair. I in the woods will pass content for him the term of banishment. So shall I steal unbroken save the promise which the hero gave. While I remain for Rama there, Satrugna will my exile share, and Rama in his home again with Lakshman over Ayodhya reign. For him to rule and guard the state. The twice-born man shall consecrate. O oh, may the gods I serve incline To grant this honest wish of mine. If, when I bow before his feet, And with all moving arts entreat, He still deny my prayer, Then with my brother will I leave. He must, he must permission give, Roaming in forest stare. Canto 89 The Passage of Ganga that night the son of Raku lay on Ganga's bank till break of day. Then with the earliest light he woke, and thus to brave Satrugna spoke. 
Rise up, said Rukna, from thy bed. Why sleepest thou? The night is fled. See how the sun who chases night wakes every lotus with his light. Arise, arise, and first of all, the Lord of Sringaveda call, for he his friendly aid will lend, our army over the flood to send. Thus urged, Satrugna answered, I, remembering Rama's sleepless lie, as does the brothers each to each, the lion melted and its speech. Came Guha, the Nishadas came, and spoke with kindly questioning. Hast thou in comfort passed, he cried, to night upon the river side? What thee, how fares it, and are these, thy soldiers healthy and at ease? Thus the Nishada's lord inquired, in gentle words which love inspired, and Varat, Rama's faithful slave, thus to the king his answer gave. The night has sweetly passed, and we are highly honoured king by thee. Now let the servants' boats prepare, our army over the stream to bear. The speech of Varat Guha heard, and swift to his bidding steered. Within the town the monarch sped, and to his ready kinsman said, Awake its kinsman, rise its friend. May every joy your lives attend. Gather its boat upon the shore, and ferry all the army over. Thus Guha spoke, nor they delayed, but rising quick their lord obeyed, and soon from every side secured five hundred boats were ready moored. Some reared aloft the mystic sign, and mighty bells were hung in line. Of farmers built, gay flags they bore, and sailors for the helm and war. One such King Guha chose, whereon, of fair white cloth, a warning shone. And sweet musicians charmed the ear, and bade his servants urge it near. Then Varat swiftly sprang on board, and then said Trugna, famous lord, to whom would many a royal dame, Kaushalya and Sumitra came. The household priest went first in place, the elders and the Brahman race, and after them the monarch's train of women born in many a wane. Turn high to heaven the shouts of those who fired the army's hearts arose, which dares who bedded along the shore or to the boats the baggage bore. Full freighted with that mighty force, the boats sped swiftly on their course, by royal Guha's servants manned, and gentle gales the banners fanned. Some boats a crowd of dames conveyed, in others noble coursers neighed, some chariots and their cattle bore, some precious wealth and golden store. Across the stream its boat was rowed, there duly disembarked its load, and then returning on its way, sped here and there in merry play. Then swimming elephants appeared, with flying pennons high upreared, and as the drivers asked them over, the look of winged mountains wore. Some men in barges reached the strand, others on rafts came safe to land, some by oid with pictures crossed the tide, and others on their arms relied. Thus with the help the monarch gave, the army crossed Pio Ganga's wave. Then in auspicious hour it stood, within Prayag's famous oud. The prince with cheering words addressed, his weary men, and bade them rest, wherever they chose and he, with priest and Deccan by his side, to Varadaja's dwelling hide, the best of saints to see. Canto 90 The Hermitage The prince of man, a league away, saw where the hermit's dwelling lay. Then with his lords his path pursued, and left his warrior multitude. On foot, as duty taught his mind, he left his warlike gear behind. Two robes of linen cloth he wore, and bade Vasista walk before. Then Varat from his lords withdrew, when Varadwaja came in view, and toward the holy hermit went, behind Vasista reverent. When Varadwaj, Saint Austere, saw good Vasista drawing near, he cried, upspringing from his seat, The grace gift bring my friend to greet. When Saint Vasista near him drew, and Varad paid the reverence due, the glorious hermit was aware that Dasarat's son was there. The grace gift, water for their feet, he gave, and offered fruit to eat. Then duty skilled, with friendly speech, in seemly order questioned each. How fares it in Ayodhya now, with treasury and army, how, with kit and kin and friends most dear, 
with counsellor and prince and peer. But for he knew the king was dead, of the cert not he said, was sister and the prince in town, earth of the hermit's welfare learn. Of holy fires they fain would hear, of people's trees and birds and deer. The glorious saint his answer made, that all as well in holy shade. Then love of Rama moved his breast, and thus he questioned of his guest. Why art thou here, O prince, whose band, with kingly sway, protects the land? Declare the cause, explain the whole, for yet some doubt disturbs my soul. He whom Kaushalya bear, whose might, the foreman slays his lines delight. He who with wife and brother sent, afar now roam in banishment. Famed prince, to whom his father spake, this order for a omen's sake. Away, and in the forest spend, Thy life till fourteen years shall end. Hast thou the wish to harm him bent, On sin against the innocent? Wouldst thou thine elders' real man joy, Without a taunt that can annoy? With sobbing voice and tearful eye, Thus Varad sadly made reply, Ah, lost am I, if thou, O saint, Canst thus in taunt my heart attain, no one in charge from thee I need, Never could such crime from me proceed. The words my guilty mother spake, When fondly jealous for my sake, Think not that I to triumph moved, Those words approve or ever approved. O hermit, I have sought this place, To win the lordly hero's grace, To throw me at my brother's feet, And lead him to his royal seat. To this my journey's aim and end, Thou shouldst, O saint, thy favour lend. Where is the Lord of art? Do thou, most holy, say, where roams he now? Then by the saint Vasista pressed, And all the gathered priests beside, To Varad's dutiful request, The hermit graciously replied, Worthy of thee, O prince, this deed, True son of Rago's ancient seed, I know thee reverent, well controlled, The glory of the good of old. I grant thy prayer in this pursuit, I know thy heart is resolute. It is for thy sake those words I said, That wider still thy fame may spread. I know where Rama duty tried, His brother and his wife abide. Where Chitrakuta's heights arise, Thy brother Rama's dwelling lies. Go thither with the morning's light, And stay with all thy lords to-night, For I will show thee honour high, And do not thou my wish deny. And of Cantos 88, 89, and 90.